<laughs> Dietrich at four under this to get back to minus five. And he comes. Yeah, well Dropped a shot on the last hole, the tough fourth. And he gets it straight back at the fifth. Two very good birdie chances coming up now, sixth and seventh. As we go to number seven and the second shot for Thomas Dietrich. Nice eagle, and Thomas Dietrich moves to six under par. So it's behind Morrison. And Morrison's got a par putt coming up on the ninth, about eight, nine feet. Let's have a look at that again. Big hitting three ball. Wilco Nienaba and Dean Burmester. In you go. Dietrich at the eighth. Six seven. Down, down. Been over on that front right section as we've oh seen God. just about there. <laughs> down the hill for Thomas Deach. Yeah. 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 Right side. He joins the pack at seven under par. Three under for the last two. That's a really nice move from the Belgian. In a share of eighth place. Thomas, is your round today evidence of momentum and how powerful it is? Because you were one over through six, then you make an eagle at seven, and suddenly bird is at eight and nine as well. That's exactly right. It's been like the way my scorecards have been going the last couple of weeks, actually. Uh, just one birdie and then momentum, and then another birdie and then another birdie. Uh, but that little chip in was definitely a, a nice little boost because, uh, like you said, I was off to an average start, two lip outs, and uh, it was very nice to be three under on a, on a breezy day. So many factors here in determining how far the ball goes. Obviously altitude, change in elevation, temperature. Does it feel a bit like Bryson DeChambeau? You know, all these equations to work yeah, out. It's, it's exactly like Bryson DeChambeau. Yeah, we, we need to, it's literally science, you know. We, uh, obviously in the morning when it's a bit cool, uh, ball doesn't fly quite as far. And then in the, in the afternoon when it's windy and dry and warm, obviously the ball flies much further. So. We need to factor all of that in, uh, do a lot of work on the range as well the last couple of days, uh, and then try our best on the golf course. You're getting fabulous support out here. Are there a lot of Belgians here or what? Because they're cheers for you. Are, they're are, are all Belgian. It's almost like playing at home here. Uh, yeah, my, my family is, the, is here. Um, I love this country, really. Um, I mean, we, we've been actually in the mountain for the last two weeks as well, so we've been uh, enjoying the, the Swiss cheese and the and the Swiss Alps and uh, and it's it's been fantastic so uh, so I've, I've, I felt pretty ready for this week we're enjoying your play keep going well thank you thanks Dietrich <coughs> top of the hill uh, the 12th spends a long time in the air your approach to this green you just hope it drops the right distance that's half a club too much but you've got to miss on that side you have to Dietrich down the slope at 12. A little bit of help from Burmester. Ah. Yeah, good putt though. Good putt from that top deck. Dittry at 13. carry the water by that much so all three players in or around the putting surface and move on 13th hole signature hole amphitheater back of this green that's a birdie punt outside one for Thomas Dietrich gave that a crack Ooh, it's a nice little three footer down the hill there's just a little bit of shine Jamie there is I noticed Did you that. see that mm -hmm. Drying out, we've had lovely weather. Up one, second shot for Thomas Dietrich, the par five. Oh, that's an amazing Seems left. to like it. He certainly does. That made a gorgeous sound from Thomas Dietrich. Into that par five. Dietrich to get to nine under par to get alongside Sio Segrist Robin. I hope I said that right. Sure I did. 
Ali, you can correct me on things. That's the right pronunciation, isn't it? Crushed it. Beautiful. Well, don't worry, Thomas. Rich has given you this, so Actually, just pick it up. Off you go. It's a little it's a from this camera angle. It's a little longer than I thought, Jamie. To be honest, there might be an official retraction Why? coming shortly. Well, as Jamie knows, there's a bit of left to right on this one as well. Just outside that left edge, all firm and centre. birdie uh, 14 for Dietrich. There's some landing area. This front of this green's got a bluff, so you've got to carry it above that. There's 20 paces. So plenty of landing area. Playing very solidly, uh, Thomas Dietrich. A couple of putts there, and they're going to double figures under par. Back to the 15th. And Thomas Dietrich. Putting up the rise just about there. Should break left on the way up. If it had the chance, I think it might have. He'll be less than thrilled with that attempt. <laughs> Honestly, putting stats. Well, it's, it's pretty close at the top. In terms of total putts, Hold in feet between Burmester and Dietrich, just uh, 2.3 between them. Be a good putt to hold this. 18 feet or so, 15 feet maybe for his par, but to stay at 10 under. Yeah, that's an excellent putt. Plenty of pace on that one. Well done there for Thomas Dietrich, 28 year old. Just what he needed. Seventeen, Dietrich. Placement tee shot here, up the seventeenth. Mr. Bunker on the left. Shortish par four with a, another tigerish pin. Good tee shot from Thomas Dietrich. A brave one as too well, Dom. He took the bunker on. Which if you're going to get at this flag, you need the shortest possible iron to get in there. Flag not moving on the green, but the breeze and the fairways into off the right. The little parcel shelf, little area where the flag is cut by. Three yards to the right, two yards to the left, you run onto the lower level. The perfect shot is just a little hold cut, but off an upslope with the ball above your feet, not easy to do. This needs to be pinpoint accurate to get within 10 feet. see that bounce I've been talking about just uh, what is it five or six paces left of that pin just the wind and a fraction too much draw is nearly perfect not quite enough cut spin so it rode the breeze a fraction just tiptoed over the back of the green but not a bad angle to chip from he stayed on the upslope he's only about a yard or so short of the putting surface what he's got to be aware of, if he goes a little bit past, the green runs away from you, so it needs a good touch. But a basic little chip. Get the right contact and let it just run out. Get it off, slightly off the back foot. I think I'd just be worried that, you know, be like a kite. If the wind stops, the kite goes that way. Yeah, down. I know. I think I, I don't know enough about it, but there's a few thermals and stuff. I think they keep going all the time. But I'd rather just walk on the ground. Thank you. Oh, it was a demanding tee shot this one. Down breeze today, got to carry it minimum 260 on the left and 285 on the right to get on the little ledge, the little plateau.
Bunker. Oh dear. Bunker. You know, he needs that to go in the bunker. Badly. It's okay, he's found it. Didn't want to be pitching short there and kicking right and going down into the right. It's not good. We didn't like contact. Sounded good. Is good from there. Right on top of the ball there, sit a bit closer to it to make sure he was steep. Get the ball first. Good shot from Dietrich. Great try from Dietrich. Really was. And a good day for him as well. Back 65s. That'll work. As he will do. Look at that. Six under for his last 12 holes. Brilliant stuff. Thomas, back to back 65s is impressive golf. What's pleased you most about your play? Uh, oh, I've, I really find uh, find my swing again. I feel like uh, you know I've been struggling a little bit. Uh, uh, I won't say the last couple of weeks, and I, I've done some work uh, on my short game with a coach, and then on, on my swing with another coach, and uh, it's really paying off. I feel like, uh, especially on a course like this one, where iron shots are really important. You know, f hitting in the middle of the, on, on good, good, good targets on the greens, uh, it's it's really important. I've, I've I've been able to do that so far. You've only played once in the last six weeks at the Olympics. Was that a deliberate thing to try and reboot and recharge the batteries ready for a big finish to the year? Yeah, exactly right. I mean, I'm in, I'm in a really good position uh, in the race to Dubai right now, especially after that playoff loss in, uh, in Scotland. So, uh, uh, exactly right. I, I knew I, was, I had plenty of points to, 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 be, to be well inside the top 50 in the race to Dubai. And, uh, and, uh, and who knows, there's a Ryder Cup coming up. So, uh, uh, those last couple of weeks uh, were nicely uh, chilled and relaxed, uh, reboost, and uh, I'm ready to go. I mentioned the Olympics. How big a thrill was it to be an Olympian and, and, and compete out there? Yeah, it was it, it was fantastic. I mean, it, it was an unbelievable uh, experience. The only sad thing I want to say is that obviously I haven't really been able to prepare the way I wanted to for a tournament. And it was far away. I was playing the Open two weeks before, I played Scotland three weeks before. All these weeks were pretty tiring, and uh, and and I felt like I didn't really prepare as much as I wanted to the week before so I kind of got there a bit late and and with jet lag and, and time difference and different grass and everything but but unbelievable experience and uh, only three years to wait now until Paris 265 is impressive keep it going thank you thanks Thomas to watch another European tour video click here and to subscribe click here